Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. A very short video today. I want to talk a little bit about my experience of running standalone window managers and ensuring that everything works so that when I open up a file manager, I can see the trash can. When I plug in a USB drive, it pops up in the file manager. And also, you know, when I try and order, uh, open a, an application that requires extra privileges, such as Gparted, for instance, I get the little box popping up asking me for my password. See you after the intro, and I'll take you through what I do. Okay, welcome back. So, a little bit different today. Um, normally, I'm at uh, my workstation down in the cabin, but my son is staying with me uh, this weekend, and he's decided that he needs the computer down there to do some of his work. So, I've uh, got one of my uh, ThinkPads, an X280. I've fired up the old uh, C920 webcam, and uh, I'm having a go at producing a video sat in my kitchen. So, slightly different. Okay, so a couple of things I want to, to show you, and, it, and it's specific to Slackware because every distro works slightly differently, and those with System D, the init system, are likely to work in a slightly different way to distros that don't run System D. The two components that I want to talk about briefly are Polkit and Polkit. I can't even say it. Polkit authentication which is uh, really important to make sure that you get a little pop-up box so you can put your password in and uh, launch applications that require privileges. And the second thing I want to talk about is DBus. It's important to make sure that you have a DBus uh, session running if you want to see your trash can, for instance, in your file manager and be able to see new devices as you plug them in and to be able to mount them as a user rather than root. None of that is going to happen automatically in a standalone window manager. If you use a desktop environment, it's normally all set up for you. Not so though with a standalone window manager. It's not difficult to set up, but there are a couple of processes that you have to go through. So let me show you what those are. So the first thing uh, I want to look at is Polkit. Now, if I'm going to launch uh, an application that needs enhanced privileges, and I've already mentioned uh, Gparted, so let's stick with that. If Polkit is worth it working correctly, I get a little uh, box here prompting me for my root password. I input it, and, Pol and uh, Gparted opens up with the correct permissions. Now, on a desktop environment, all of this is going to be seamless. It's going to be set up behind, you know, in the background. With a standalone window manager, though, you're going to have to do the work yourself to make sure that that happens. And the way I do it, if I just make this full screen and uh, make it a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on, that should do it. And I move into my dot flux box. Um, directory and I bring up there's a startup item and the startup script here automatically calls there you are Polkit, Polkit authentication USR libexec Polkit dash gnome dash authentication dash agent dash one so I call it from my startup script if I didn't do this I wouldn't get the authentication box and I would just have to proceed by typing sudo or going to root or something in the terminal. So that's Polkit. Nice and straightforward. The second part, though, is Dbus. And these things all sort of work together. Dbus isn't something that seems to be talked about that much. But on this particular desktop, uh, I haven't got a Dbus uh, session starting up. And what you'll see is if I start my file manager, there is no trash icon there at all. 
None at all. And if I were to plug in a USB stick, it would not automatically show up on the left. It does, of course, in a full desktop environment, but it wouldn't automatically do it in a standalone window manager. So what I actually wanted to do is this. I want to see that. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same, basically, but now the trash can has appeared. And if I were to insert a USB key, it would show up. If I had other, other drives in this uh, laptop, they would also show up on the side. So that's what we want. How do we actually achieve that? Well, it depends how you start your window manager. As I said, I'm using Slackware 15 here. And my preferred way of starting is to simply use an X init RC uh, file. So if I again open up a, um, a terminal, and if I just make this a little bit bigger, and I go to CD, ETC, X11, X init, you will see that there are quite a few X init RC files there for the various window managers and desktop environments that I've got installed. If I was to open up the Fluxbox one, so let's open up that now. The important thing is the entry on the exec line. If you just put in there exec USR bin start Fluxbox, the window manager would start fine. What you need, though, is this little comment here, dbus-launch. That will start a session. Now, you'll see on some older Xinit RC files uh, with Slackware and other operating systems, a little script here that calls something called CK launch session, which is part of uh, what we used to use in Slackware, uh, a component called console kit. We no longer use console kit. Everything's moved on to uh, e-logined. So dbus dash launch is all you actually need. And to make it a bit neater, I just go dash dash exit dash with dash session. You could even make that dash dash exit dash with dash x11. That's all you need. You don't need a script. And as long as you've got that at the end of your x init rc file, all is good. Now, I thought I'd play around um, over the last couple of days, to be honest, and see if uh, using a login manager worked for me as well in Slackware. I never seem to feel the need in Slackware because Start X just feels right. But I, I went into the ETC Init tab. Uh, I changed the run default run level from three to four, which is all that's required to launch SDDM. And uh, I created a few desktop files to make sure that SDDM could actually see the various window managers. And yeah, I was able to log in. Um, I mentioned desktop files because you won't necessarily have desktop files for every window manager. So if I go to where they're all kept, which is USR, share, uh, X sessions. And let me just make that a bit bigger so you can see what you're looking at. And I do an LS. And let's say I bring up uh, the Fluxbox desktop. It's a very small file. Simply says its name, a comment, and what the exec execution line is, which is start Fluxbox. And the type is an X session. So I created that myself. I was always under the impression that if you launched um, a window manager or a desktop environment from a login manager, you didn't have to worry about manually starting Dbus because it would do it. It was all part and parcel of the process. Well, it turns out it depends what the distro is that you're running. It tends to be part of the process with uh, System D. And certainly if you're running the likes of Plasma or XFCE, it starts up automatically anyway, and you won't have any problems. 
I found, though, it wasn't starting up automatically in Slackware using SDDM, which seemed a bit strange to me because it was counterintuitive. However, I found the answer. And there's two answers that you can uh, pursue, really, if you want a, a, a D-Bus session started. You can either open up all of these uh, individual desktop files, go to the exec line, and you can simply insert that those couple of words, dbus-launch, and that will do it. It seemed a bit messy to me, though, doing it that way. And there is another way, and it's a lot cleaner. So where you want to go, you want to go to CD, USR, Share, SDDM, and there is a scripts folder there. And you will see, let me just make this a little bit bigger again, that there is inside that scripts folder uh, a file called X session. So if I open that up, you'll see it's a bash script. And if you come all the way down to the bottom, the very last line simply has the words exec and then the little red characters there at the bottom, which is, you know, a dollar sign and uh, uh, an at sign. All you need to do is insert the word dbus dash launch between the exec word and the dollar sign, close it, re-log in, and you'll have a dbus session on all of your window managers, even if they're standalone. So let me just shut that down. That's all I really wanted to talk about today. We'll have a quick chat and uh, then I'll leave you to your weekend. Right, guys, so that's Polkit and uh, DBus and how to get them working uh, on standalone win window managers in Slackware. Pretty straightforward. And I thought it might be worth doing a video on it because some people might be tearing their hair out, wondering where their, their trash can's gone and why they can't get these things working. As you probably know, um, it's been a bit of a rough time for myself and my wife, uh, which is why there hasn't been a lot of videos. We're both going through some major health issues at the moment, which should hopefully be sorted out in the next week or two, I'm hoping. Um, and I will keep you updated. In the meantime, though, thanks for your support. And uh, I think I have to say, like and subscribe and have a great weekend. Cheers.